Hi guys and welcome back to Complete the Fandom, the channel where we celebrate, discuss and share our thoughts on thousands of fandoms out there. What's better than a fandom than an RPG superhero campaign? Now I've been a DD and d player for so long, so, so very long and as much as I like Dungeons and Dragons, I thought I'd want to have a change, run a different system. I picked up my Disney Mastermind, I picked it up a while back, I put it on my bookshelf for a bit, flicked through it, picked up again, but now I'm ready to do a campaign and so I thought, yeah, I'll go through the book and let you know what I think of the book and what's the content in it. Chapter one is the basics, it tells you the basics of how to run a role playing game and that's pretty much simple. It's to roll your dice, have a good storyline, have players that are involved in the storyline, uh, getting the players involved. It tells you about abilities, skills, etc., etc. The things with Mutants as Mastermind that I'm not too fond of is there's a lot of maths. There's a lot of maths on how much time it takes to do something. So if you've got super speed, you've got to minus it from the table that they've got. And once you get into it and used to it, then that's great. It's just, it's very different from what I've played before. Chapter two is Secret Origins which tells you how to design a character and create a character. And character creation is this is pretty difficult when you first look at it. But when you start getting into it, it's easy. But the best thing about this chapter is it has random character creations. And it actually says, if you've never played Mutant the Masterminds before, do a random gener generator character. Pretty much is you ro roll a d20, follow the instructions, follow the tables, and you come out with some magnificent characters. But it's a good start. It's a very good start. You get to learn about abilities, skills, and how powers work. Chapter three is all about the abilities. Any RPG system has abilities, which is normally strength, dexterity, constitution, will, uh, charisma, okay? Uh, they're the basics of what your character is like and how he's built and how he interacts with other people. Um, Mutant Mass Minds have added extra ones in, so you have strength for how powerful you are, you have stamina for how much your powers take up and how much you can run and do stuff without getting tired. You have your agility, which is how you can jump about and swing about and bounce off walls. You have your dexterity, which is your aiming of weapons and your hand, I guess, if you're firing stuff. Uh, you have your fighting skills, which is more your vigilante stuff, so it's hand-to-hand -hand combat, um, that kind of thing. You have your intelligence, which is obvious. You have your awareness, which is your spot, search, look, hearing, feeling, stuff like that. And you have your presence, which is how people perceive you. So if you're coming down flying from the sky, uh, you roll, you can roll your on your presence table or whatever and they can be they can be quite scared of you if, and, and so yeah it's, it's nice that they've got added abilities rather than just your usual five six in the usual six and with those abilities comes your stats for your dodge which you use to avoid ranged attacks your parry which you use to block hand-to-hand -hand combats your fortitude which tells you about your health and how much you can resist alcohol and poisons etc You've got your toughness, which is the major part of these. Um, what it is, is if you get hit, you have to roll your toughness and it tells you how much damage you take. And then obviously you've got your will save, which is how your mind works and how you can stop interference in mind games, which is really good against telepath telepathy <laughs> and other mind altering effects. Chapter four are your skills. Pretty easy, it's what you're good at. So it's what you've learned as well. It's not innate abilities is what you've learned is skills so that's like computers technology um fighting skills s swimming s basic skills that everyone has and what you can put points in chapter five are your advantages most rpg systems are advantages and these are again what you've learned i guess and and what your your ability to do naturally and these this gives you a whole range of stuff that you can do chapter six is the big chapter. This is all about the powers. If you've not done random character generation and you want to do your superhero and the powers fresh, then this is where you're looking at. And this is where it gets complicated. You have to read it a few times and it can get overwhelming. And that's just not me saying that. Some of my friends have read the book and said, wow, what you need to do 
is focus on what power set you want. For example, we'll go with firepower. Okay, power ability to create and manipulate fire. And so you have to go for your offensive damage, you have to go for your defensive, and what you need to do is say that you're firing fire, so you have an attack ability, power even. And then you have to think about what that ability does, so it burns people and it uh, whether it shoots fire or there's a cone and, and that's what really makes this stand out to others because you can create your power how you wanted it. It's not just like, oh, I'm a bow and arrow guy shooting arrows. It's like, I want my bow and arrows to do this and I want it to do that. And each power has a set, as several sets of numbers to see how powerful it is. You also have modifiers which increase the price of the powers but you can also have flaws which decreases the, uh, the powers. So take for example teleportation, if you have an advantage of being able to slow down your descent, so if you're falling you want to teleport out of the way, or you can change directions as well, flaws could be it ties you out. So it's really worth reading through it, deciding exactly what powers you want, decide what flaws you want and what to knock down the price, but also what modifiers you want to increase the price of the cost of the powers. But yeah, be very, very specific. And if you want me to go through powers at a later date and how to create them, then I'm happy to do that. Chapter seven is gadgets and gear, like binoculars and thieves tools, that sort of thing. And it also explains that if you're an inventor and you have advanced uh, skill points in technology, then it tells you how to design device or how, to, and then how to make it and how much time it would take. <laughs> you can be this mad scientist and you need a gadget there and then and then you like design it and you make it and it can give you any power you want. Chapter 8 is all about action and adventure. It tells you how to run the adventure and how the um, rules work and, how, and when to roll the dice and when not to roll the dice. And it goes through step by step starting from initiative which you roll a d20, add your initiative to it to see where you are in the order of the fighting. It goes through challenges and then it goes into conflicts. Right, if you are an RPG user and you're used to hit points, Mutant Mastermind does not have that. They have a different way of doing damage. Technically, the guy who's attacking you rolls a dice, see whether he hits against your dodge and parry, and then you, and then if they do get through your defense, then the player taking the hit rolls a d20, uses the toughness against damage plus 15. Chapter nine is all about games mastering. It tells you how to run the campaign and how to write an adventure to make it interesting for the players to get involved. It's very interesting about what kind of setting you want it, whether you want it dark, futuristic, whether you want it noir, and it gives you choices and examples on how to run those type of games. And then we go on to uh, examples of cities and superheroes. The first one's Emerald City, and it actually got an adventure set in Emerald City as well, which is nice. You can use that for your first role-playing game. And there's also a Freedom City as well. So yeah, it's very different from what I'm used to playing. I'm looking forward to having a go at this, whether I like it or not, I don't know. But from what I get from the rules, I think I will enjoy it. It's gonna be very fast paced. It's gonna be very comic booky, which is what I've been wanting for a long time. If you've played it before, please let me know what you think of it. Leave me in the comments below. If I've got any of the rules wrong that I've said in this video, again, I've flicked through it, but please correct me. Tell me how things are done. Once I've played the game, I'll let you guys know how it goes. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta for now.